So I've been uh, driving this uh, 2019 Ram Bighorn for the past three days here in Detroit. I've uh, driven around uh, 400 miles and uh, in, in total. And I think about 60% of that has been um, highway and 40% in town in, in Detroit. So I was just gonna give you all a couple of, uh, tell you a little bit of what I thought about this car. And uh, I'll start with the good parts. I will say that uh, it has a very smooth running engine and uh, it's got a lot of power. I get terrific mileage. I think uh, the mileage that you're getting in, in this big car, because it is very big, is uh, just 10, 20 years ago, it would be a miracle. I've been uh, getting, over these 400 miles, I've been getting 19 miles to the gallon. And uh, I've uh, done a lot of kickdowns. I've uh, tried to see what, how, how fast it can go. It, it would, there, there's a governor at 104 miles per hour, so it won't go faster than that. And uh, I haven't been uh, driving to save gas. And 19 miles per gallon uh, is, is, is very good. I can imagine if I had been driving with my uh, Suburban, with my 2005 Suburban in the, under the same conditions, I probably would have gotten maybe 13 miles to the gallon or something like that. So the engine is very, is very nice, got a lot of power. Uh, the transmission shifts very smoothly, it has an, it has an eight speed transmission. Um, when it does shift smoothly, it shifts smoothly. I have noticed a couple of times some hard downshifts. I don't know why, but three or four times got really hard downshifts. Um, the sound of the engine is gorgeous, it has this very nice roar to it that you will I mean if you bought this car you'd love that uh, I also like how the gauges you can customize uh, the gauge cluster and you can get a lot of information about what's going on with the car the temperature of the oil the temperature of the coolant the temperature of the trans uh, the transmission fluid uh, you can see the range that you have, the current mile, the current uh, mon current mileage that you're getting, and uh, the long-term uh, average. Difficult finding the words, you know. I'm actually Swedish, so this is maybe why I'm I have a little difficult time finding some words sometimes. But okay, so that's the good part. Now, the bad part is, I would say, the visibility. The visibility is horrendous. I first felt when I got into this car that it was difficult to know where the car is. I've, I've, I felt that still now, I feel that driving the car, it's difficult to know where, where it is. The ends, the, when it begins and ends. It's not like I, I'm not used to big cars. I have a 2005 Suburban and I drive a 67 Cadillac, so I'm used to big cars, but, but this, uh, it's big and it's hard to know where it is. Also, you don't know at all times where the traffic around you is. The, the rear view mirrors aren't that good. When you turn around, this one is in the way. The headrest is in the way of, of cars behind you. So there, were, there are times that you, you make a turn into another lane and there was a car there that you didn't know that was there. And that kind of thing, I think that happens to me maybe once every three or four years. And with this car, it's happened three or four times in three days. So in that sense, the car is a little dangerous like that. So visibility is horrendous. Uh, the seats are not very comfortable on long rides. The seats are not very comfortable. The whole, you would think that Chrysler Dodge would have put more money into making this car and making it user friendly as it were but this is like they this is the first time that they're making a car because there's so many things that you normally don't even think about when you get into a car but in this car you're like oh this does not work and this is not good for instance you're trying to reach over and uh, flip with the radio and then without you knowing it you uh, touch the hazards button and so 
and the hazards don't make much of a sound when they're on. So after a while, you're riding and you realize your hazards are on and you feel like you're this 90 year old senile person who's driving who has this hazards on for miles. And this happens over and over again. Um, I, I don't like the shifter knob. There's this little knob for the shifter, like this one here. I don't like it. I prefer the old column uh, mounted uh, gear uh, lever, but maybe uh, maybe some people like this uh, the knob thing. Um, I don't like it much. The uh, gauges, the speedometer gauge, it's hard to read because it just is. Uh, there, there's there's a lot of clutter in the in the gauge cluster, so I don't know exactly. It's hard to just by a glance get your speed. Also, the steering wheel is in the way when you sit like the way I want to sit, so that's not very well thought through. Um, and uh, that's it. <laughs> that's all I have to say about this vehicle. I would never buy it. Uh, if, I, if it was given to me, maybe I would take it and sell it. But I wouldn't recommend anybody to buy a car that is uh, so not thought through. It has some good points. The engine mileage is pretty good. It's kind of bumpy to drive also. So, but it rides well, but you expect any of these new cars to ride well. If it was a Silverado, if it was an F-150, you would expect it to drive well. But the visibility is probably the thing that I liked least about this car, because it makes it a little dangerous. And uh, the engine is probably what I like the most. Okay, bye.